Coming to the pneumonia of H type in COVID patients, 20 to 30 percent of the patients are having this type of pneumonia. It fits into typical ARDS criteria. Patient presents with predominantly hypoxemia. There are bilateral dense lung infiltrates are there. Increased lung weight is there because of the uh, uh, edema and the consolidation. Poor lung compliance is there as we see in our um, uh, this uh, ARDS patient. That is why it is high because the high elastance. The elastance, if you try to expand them, you have to put up more force. That is why they are having high elastance and low compliance. There, this some potential of recruitability is there. They should be treated according to standard ARDS criteria. So now we have got two type of subtype of the patients uh, of the lung phenotype uh, where we have to tailor made the therapy. So. If we come to the ventilation uh, aspect of the surviving sepsis campaign guidelines for mechanically ventilated ARDS patient COVID-19 moderate to severe ARDS, they suggest prone ventilation for 12 to 16 hours over no prone ventilation. But this recommendation is having weak strength for mechanically ventilated uh, adult with COVID-19 and moderate to severe ARDS, they suggest using as needed intermittent bolus of neuromuscular blocking agent over continuous neuromuscular blocking agent infusion to facilitate protective lung ventilation. Again, a weak set, uh, recommendation. In event of persistent ventilator dyssynchrony, the need for ongoing deep sedation, prone ventilation and persistently high plateau pressure, they suggest using a continuous neuromuscular blocking agent infusion up to 48 hours. This is having a strong uh, recommendation. And in mechanically ventilated adults with COVID-19, they recommend against routine use of the inhaled nitric oxide, again a weak recommendation. In mechanically ventilated adult with COVID-19, severe ARDS and hypoxemia, despite optimizing ventilation and other rescue strategies, they suggest a trial of inhaled pulmonary vasodilator as a rescue therapy. If no rapid improvement in oxygenation is observed, the treatment should be tapered off. Again, is a weak recommendation. For mechanically ventilated adults with COVID-19 and hypoxemia, despite optimizing ventilation, they suggest using recruitment maneuver over not using any recruitment maneuver. Again, a weak recommendation. If recruitment maneuver are used, they recommend against using a staircase or incremental peep recruitment maneuver. This is a uh, uh, st the strength of this recommendation is strong. In mechanically ventilated adults with COVID-19 and refractory hypoxemia, despite optimizing ventilation, use of rescue therapies and proning, they suggest using VV ECMO if available or referring to patient to an ECMO center. Again, this is a weak recommendation. So, in COVID-19 uh, pneumonia patients with H type, we manage them with a routine ARDS type of ma and management. As you can see, this paper was published last year where they have described how to manage the ARDS. So you have to reassess the many ventilatory setting and management every 24 hours. In those patients, uh, initiation of invasive mechanical ventilation with sedation in ICU should be done. Tidal volume around 6 ml per kg, predicted body weight in absence of severe metabolic acidosis is done. And then one has to, uh, tidal volume above 6 ml per kg, predicted body weight, plateau pressure less than 30 and PEEP more than 5 should be managed. Check for hypercapnia, uh, high level of PEEP if uh, and improves oxygenation. One can, if PF ratio is less than 200, one can increase the PEEP. If PF ratio is less than 150, neuromuscular blocking and prone positioning should be done. And if PF ratio is less than 80, then one can discuss with the ECMO if uh, services are available. So different strategy, ventilatory strategy at different stages of disease, like disease is having different type of uh, stages are different. So initially, when the initial phase of the disease is there, then patient is usually seen with a L type of uh, phenotype. When the disease progresses, then it converts into the H type. So if we are able to check this 
control this willy vertex hypoxemia vigorous inflammatory uh, inspiratory response willy vessel stretch increased edema power concentration baby lung shrinkage if we are able to control this then probably we can able to control the patient control the uh, phenotype uh, we can manage the patient in l phenotype and we can avoid them going into the h phenotype so if patient is having vasoplegia and hypoxemia one can try non invasive support if inflammatory effort decreases with the non invasive support it could be a oxygen therapy it could be a niv it could be hfnc but if inspiratory effort is decreasing then one has to monitor the oxygen cpap and niv we can continue if inspiratory effort is not decreasing then one can go for intubation and lower deep sedation and neuromuscular blocking agent should be used but if we are doing a late intubation when the patient has already progressed from l to h type then one has to use higher deep one has to do proning and one can go for ecmo this is again a summary of different ventilatory strategies at the different stages of disease so before intubation the objective is to educate gas exchange and avoid patient in uh, patient self inflicted lung injury what we can do what are the options with us supplemental oxygen can be given cpap can be tried niv hfnc can be tried awake prone positioning can be done and target non vigorous breathing rational to this option is powerful respiratory effort can cause reinforcing lung and vascular distress resulting in the ventilator induced lung injury another time period could be during mechanical ventilation when you are intubating avoid pulmonary deterioration and ventilator induced lung injury vortex so what we can do here is options are minimize p frequency and tidal volume adjust to the acceptable gas exchange maintain fluid balance reduce oxygen demand one can consider ecmo at this stage as well minimize transpulmonary and vascular stress these are the rationale for this after intubation minimizing pulmonary stress optimizing oxygen and avoiding willy vortex are the object here in type l use lower peep less than 10 cm of water use more liberal tidal volume 7 to 9 ml per kg as needed reduce oxygen demand by using this little high tidal volume and consider prone positioning the rationale for this op option are lower tidal volume are unnecessary higher peep is ineffective creates dead space and adversely redirect blood flow as we have already discussed that dead space ventilation is not going higher peep can cause dead space ventilation and that can be determinantal in these patients another objective could be reduce and evenly distribute lung and vascular stress optimize oxygen avoid willy vortex this is applicable in uh, h type use higher peep more than 15 cm of water or around 15 cm lower tidal volume 5 to 7 ml per kg of predicted body weight reduce oxygen demand and implement prone positioning the rationale for this objective is to more closely behaves as a respond like a typical ards so we have to apply the ards net protocol here what we should do in winning phase avoid reversion to previously worsened pulmonary state by causing willy and worsening edema so to uh, options to avoid this the options we are having make transition cautiously avoid abrupt changes A spontaneous trial only at the very end of the winning process should be given the rationale for this option is a strong spontaneous effort again rises o2 demand increases edema and promotes the patient inflicted self inflicted lung injury